the Michael the Comic Nerd Review Team Review of Dead Before Dawn 3D. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you're quitting. I'm gonna keep doing this. But I do it better. Damn it, man! What's wrong with you? <laughs> I have a burger. Damn it! <laughs> Eat your burger, damn it! Only I may do that. Well, fuck you! I'm getting to it anyway. It's actually pretty good burger. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking quitter. Anyway, we are talking about Dead Before Dawn 3D. Pointlessly added on there for no apparent reason. Pretty much. Oh. I'm going to stay in character. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, good luck with the mic picking us up in this room. <laughs> Fuck it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so obviously I'm back this week. Uh, after a few weeks, kind of like a couple week hiatus. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Grant brought up this brilliant suggestion to go see a... Uh, this movie called Dead, Dead Before Dawn, which, if you haven't heard of it, I wouldn't be surprised. But we all, all I really knew about this has Christopher Lloyd in there, which automatically was like, okay, we have to go see it because it's it's Christopher Lloyd. How can you not? And he's, Greg is only there for like five minutes, but it's a glorious five minutes. <laughs> and best of all, he does go, Greg Scott! Scott! <laughs> it was just wonderful. I think we cheered. Yeah. <laughs> the audience, yes! Like us and like the four other people in the audience. I'm surprised they even showed up. I didn't think anyone else was going to be here. Yeah, it's like, what the hell? Someone else heard of this? <laughs> yeah, so especially in like for Camera 12, which is like kind of like the, the theater you don't usually frequent except us because it's convenient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I frequent all the time. But um, yeah. Um, anyway, and it's kind of sad to say that probably was, well, wasn't, actually, you know, it was the best part of the movie. <laughs> Well, let me just put it this way. This is a terrible, terrible film. But, in a way I cannot describe. So don't ask me. I kind of enjoyed it. No, I understand. It's like, <laughs> you, you get, sometimes you get those terrible movies where, you know, you just have fun with it. Like, Ghost Rider 2. Fair enough. <laughs> or was it me with, uh, okay, that doesn't count. My Bloody Valentine was kind of the same mood where it's partially a comedy but that's besides the point but anyway this is one of those ones where like it is it's basically a parody of like a lot of the so zombie the, demon movies out there it's basically think like epic movie or any of that kind of crap it's in the same vein although exactly. better better be not better. much but not much it's, but it's better it's taller well <laughs> barely tolerable <laughs> well they, they didn't have Christopher Lloyd so there you go fair point automatically it's already better but yeah, anyway, basic plot is kids awaken in urn, or basically awaken some demon in an occult shop that's owned by Christopher, Christopher Lloyd. Lloyd, who plays the grandfather of the main character, whose name is Garfield or <laughs> Barney or Ga I, Casper. I, I, Casper, that was his name. All right, that's for now. I was making the whole friendly ghost joke in my head the entire time. Oh yeah, that was kind of obvious. It was kind of hard not to. Yeah, but um. Yeah, him and a few friends accidentally crack an urn open. Which, I'm sorry, what happens is basically, it's supposed to be cursed with the evil spirits that your great-great-grandfather used to hunt through the ages and collected in this urn. Which is very, and that has the book, we'll get to the book. But, uh, yeah. and then of when they break the urn and the evil spirits are released, and everyone gets to start joking about what kind of curse they would come up with. And that's the curse that actually happens, which seems, in hindsight, like an incredibly wasted opportunity. Because if you really could set the parameters of your own curse, you can really make that work in your favor. I was like, oh, wouldn't well, it be such a drag well, if I was continuously would, wealthy? Well, well, then it wouldn't be a curse now, would it? <laughs> well, you know, curse with wealth, they say, in some poetics yeah. can say that's a curse in their own way. Oh, like the whole monkey paw thing. But regardless. Yeah. Anyway, so what happens is... Uh, any person they make eye contact with at the start of 10, because midnight was too much of a cliche. Um, the irony apparently was lost on them. <laughs> yeah. No, that was the joke. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. like, the, uh, like, everything else is pretty much cliche to the letter, but... Yeah. Sometimes it's tongue-in-cheek, other times clearly not so much. Yeah. But, um, anyway, what happens is, uh, yeah, so anyone they see basically kills themselves, and they're... Resurrected as a zeman or a zombie demon. Yeah. And basically, they're gonna they try to kill them. Pretty much. And if they don't do it before dawn, 
Because you're going uh, to give yourself a bigger timeline. Like, if we don't solve it within a week, <laughs> there you go. That would have given you some, like, leeway a little bit on that. Yeah. And there's some other parameters, but those aren't important, because nothing really major comes from it. No, it's one of those movies it's also kind of hard to talk about, because I can point out the logical flaws in this movie, but clearly it doesn't give a shit. So yeah. It's one of the... But, um, anyway, yeah, it's, it's basically meant to be a comedy parody thing, but it just, at least for me, it fell pretty flat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's a Z movie, pretty much. It's, it's so completely over the top and absurd. Yeah. That there's almost an enjoyment factor in that alone. Not, regardless of whether the ride's actually funny or not. It's like, yeah. it's basically watching a train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't want to look, but you kind of have to. Yeah. The only difference is that they kind of partially realize that it's meant to be in the style of a train wreck, but I don't think they realize it's a legitimate train wreck. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Yeah. I just know the whole point is, like, Christopher Lloyd's like, whatever you do, he does three rules to running my shop body. Yes. And it's like, there's a, uh, what, was, what was the first yeah. one? Don't close down during business hours. Lock up when you leave. And whatever you do, do not come within spitting distance of the urn, evil urn. Which is like, we don't know why we don't just lock it in a safe somewhere. But yeah. it shouldn't come. No one should see it. No one should come near it. Yet for some reason I have it open in plain sight. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to be off and hope for the best. Someone just sent me an email, apparently. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And so the entire time it's them just trying to, like, take care of this curse and hijinks ensue. Pretty much. And of course you have the main character cliches which are so like over the yeah. top. Like even by over the top standards over the top. You have like the douchebag which I swear popped right from like the 70s high school commercial. Yeah. Where it like had the pop collar and the I think that'd like, be more like, 80s then. But maybe more 80s but somewhere, somewhere where they had those douchebag commercials had like the chalk drawings like yeah. wiggled. <laughs> and you had the guy going Yeah basically he was kind of like a Jersey Shore reject. Like, he even had that kind of, <laughs> he even kind of had that accent. Oh, God, we're bringing that back. <laughs> Jersey Shore finally went away. We don't talk about it anymore. It's oddly enough, it's own curse. Fitting. <laughs> <laughs> then, you had, then you had, like, the jock, who's the best friend of the main character. You had the, the comic relief in a movie that's pretty much one giant comic relief, so it seemed almost yeah. kind of redundant. It's on way. Like he sells urns. Like he had a not urns, like mugs. Where he, the one was like a hot dog mug and other mugs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah you yeah. get the best friend who the best friend chick. What my surprise? There was not a lot of tension. No, cause I expected that, but there wasn't. So it's like until the very end, when she goes, "I love you." It's like, well, that came right out of nowhere. Yeah. And <laughs> like he doesn't even know the main character. And the guy's like acknowledge it. The guy's like, oh well. That's nice. <laughs> no, he doesn't even acknowledge it. No. He's just like, no, don't die. I think myself. Ah, uh, so you're just gonna ignore yeah. that then? Oh, uh -oh. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like unless unless she meant like that in a brother kind of way. Because wasn't she like, dating, dating like that a, other like terrible a TA who was like yeah. a terrible poet? For some reason, I thought of Troy Baker when I saw him. Just like the way he talked. Troy Baker. Yeah. Refresh my memory. Uh, he is the main character in The Last of Us. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean the voice of the main character. Really? That, you might like start to mind. That's what the voice sounded like, but uh, maybe that's not. besides the point. Um, and yeah, that's really it. As well as it, it's again, it's a hard movie to talk about because it's a terrible movie. It knows it's a terrible movie. It's for people who watch those. Horrible C-class zombie movies on weekends that are so terrible that you can see the boom mic popping up at the top. Yeah. The whole thing feels like a student movie. Yeah. Kind of like the Darkling. Anyway. <laughs> Couldn't resist, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's a cult classic now, so I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> he just made a shameless plug-in! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Hey, it's for your benefit. Yes, it is. That being said, if you want to see the Darkling by that episode, click the link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Then <And> fuck you. <laughs> oh, let's not spoil the meme yet. No, okay. All right. Uh, but um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's like, in the end, it's just a matter of whether or not you find it funny, but, like, more li more likely than not, you probably won't. You might be in the camp or, like, like it's like so me, stupid right? you kind of enjoy it. Yeah. But that being said, though... Every now and then, it does get a couple good gags in there. There was one really funny gag. That Outside of Christopher Lloyd being Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, Christopher Lloyd. There's a, like a, there's a part towards the very end of my movie with Christopher Lloyd, where literally it was like, a, it was after everything's over, time reversed itself. Spoiler, like you're going to go see this anyway. Uh, 
or like after they uh, complete the ritual or whatever to stop the reverse the curse, er everything goes back to the way it started first, so nobody actually dies. Which I honestly, I kind of expected that to happen. I should have, but yet I still feel cheated. Uh, I I kind of expect it was a big surprise. Like there's no way they're gonna kill Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> he didn't mean it. But anyway, uh, him and the girl that he had a crush on beginning the movie, they hook up at the end of the movie predictably, and they go to Christopher Lloyd's shop, and he goes, hey, we kind of want to become employees for you, and so they get it, goes, oh, you do? Well, and then he just kind of sits there for a second, like, line! Yeah, <laughs> he just, that's great, I'll be right back. He, he like, goes in a room, and, like, literally a second later, he's suddenly in vacation gear. I've been waiting 50 years for this! <laughs> and, uh, well, there's a part where, like, there's a five-second pause where he's sitting, like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, like, I was supposed to do something here! <laughs> Bonnie, come here! <laughs> oh, there's one part we I made it we made it I made a joke after the movie we both laughed at was like uh, Christopher Lloyd comes back after everything. Oh, he, shit. Okay, <laughs> basically, yeah, when they're kind of explaining the whole rules or everything and like how the fact they created this curse and that like the rules are kind of making itself. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of something, but I can't think of what. Um, Either way, uh, Christopher Lloyd comes back because he had to leave the uh, shop in his uh, grandson's hands. Yeah. Because he won like a, a cheap, a lifetime achievement award at a cult place, something like yeah. that. So he comes back after all that, places trophy on the stand, and he realizes like, oh, everything's gone to shit, pretty yeah. much. So the kids eventually end up back at the shop and uh, just like you know, Christopher Lloyd, yeah, just explain the they rules and Lloyd. <laughs> like the idiots they are, they don't seem to realize they're constantly making eye contact with the man. And he like, predictably kills himself. Yeah, he impales himself in the head with this trophy. <laughs> and then, of course, oddly enough, Christopher Lloyd as a zombie is actually kind of funny. <laughs> so he comes back as a zombie, but the problem is he comes out holding, like, the plot device book, yeah. which has the instructions for, like, how to cure yeah. the disease, or, like, cure, reverse the curse. Yeah. And he comes out like, Bonnie, you forgot your plot device! <laughs> yeah. For, like, no apparent reason, because he wasn't holding it when he died, and he wasn't holding it when he came back. Yeah. So he literally just grabbed it and goes, You forgot this! <laughs> you need this later! Yeah. I wanted to club you to death with it, but you might as well take it with you! <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it's dangerous where you're going! Take this! <laughs> I'll die! <laughs> and then, of course, he dies, but you know. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Clearly, we had just the most fun with Christopher Lloyd in this movie. Yeah, but also my other favorite line. You know, they're, the main guy's waiting out in a camp or while the other guys are gathering supplies. Just... You know, maybe the radio will calm me down. Everyone's dead! Nope. Like, <laughs> I admit, that was like a legitimately great gag. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, that's always what you want to see. Like, they always have the news reports goes, God help us all. Like, you are horrible news people. <laughs> <laughs> Just basically, like, what was that one nostalgia critic joke where he's like, that's basically like saying if you open, turn on the news, it goes, and today's nude, panic, 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 we're all gonna die. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, you know what, uh, that was like one of the few legitimately good moments in there, yeah. And then he had like Bleakly from Lilo and Stitch in there, which is kind of like random. Yeah. Because like, the really high voice guy, I can't do it, but... <laughs> you want to give it a shot? I said I practiced with Christopher Lloyd, I don't... Are you trying to do Bleakly or Arnold? <laughs> oh wait, that's Stallone. That's Stallone! <laughs> Come on. Okay, I'll be Arnold, you be Stallone. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, that's yeah, that's pretty... Arnold. This it's is not less... It's not the Doom... This is less review more of us just, like, have an excuse to... Dick off. Pretty yeah. Much. It's, it's, isn't that what we do every week? Yeah, much? that's true. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, it's... There's, re there's really not more to say. It's like, aside from those couple gags, it's just like, it's... It's it's a no brainer movie. Yeah. You either love it, you either have the. It's so stupid you'll enjoy it, or you'll think it's stupid. And I, I was definitely in the not so good stupid camp. See, I actually I actually kind of enjoyed myself in a weird way because I don't know why I shouldn't have, and I'm kind of ashamed of it a little bit. But yeah, <laughs> I just there. I don't know why. I really don't know why, but I just it was just the right amount. It was just the right kind of cheesy for me. Where I just kind of, I, I just enjoyed it. I don't know why. I honestly don't. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I mean, it has all the beats you expect from these kind of movies. It's stupid. It's yeah. There are a couple of good funny parts in that. Otherwise, it's so stupid you can kind of laugh at it. But, aside from that, there's really not much to talk about. Yeah. Okay, unless we can do, like, more Christopher Lloyd quotes. <laughs> no. We, we really can't. <laughs> so this is going to be a short video, but... I think we made this pretty funny, in my opinion. But, uh, so I guess we can move on to trailers then. 
So let's see, what do we got? I wrote them down this time, because I came through. I thought this one through. Ah! <laughs> what are you awing me about? For once, we actually get to remember all the fucking movies. <laughs> but do we really want to? Actually, we got some decent trailers. Trailers we've all seen before. Actually, not really. I actually haven't seen any of these before. Not, not that I talked about in the camera, anyway. Mm. Like, so we got the trailer for Old Boy, the remake. Which looks, I don't know, it looks okay. I, was, I never saw the original, to be honest. So. In all fairness, this is more based on the manga than the uh, Korean movie. Is it really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was a manga. Yep. Which means there will be some key differences, which I can't talk about because... Spoiler. Exactly. Major spoilers for, like, if I say it, it basically kills the entire point of the movie. Fair enough. Uh, either way, it looks kind of like an interesting kind of thriller. Even mm -hmm. granted, like, a lot of questions just pop up in the trailer alone. Um, then we had Bad Grandpa, which is brought to you by the always eloquent and gentlemanlike behavior from Jackass. So, of course, you expect nothing from class from this mature comedy. Yeah, all I gotta know is, yeah, it's Johnny Knoxville doing his, like, grandpa shtick from some of the other Jackass movies, I think. And just a little gotta... kid being an obnoxious little kid. Granted, yeah. the I will call you cinnamon line kind of made me chuckle. <laughs> oh no! Admittedly, the thing in the end of the trailer, which one? Where basically, apparently, oh, really, that made you laugh? Come on! No, it was the just the reaction that. <laughs> okay. Just the okay, so what happens for context? You can look up the trailer if you really want to know. But uh, sorry, I just remember the little conversation I had afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Remember, um, uh, what was it? Um, basically, it ends with like the kid dressing up as a girl for a pageant and then basically does something not unlike Little Miss Sunshine which they do a oh, yeah. stripper strip <laughs> that's what I was talking about <laughs> okay yeah so he does a stripper routine and like, it's like, like the judge is like completely shocked and then like, just... and then uh, you, you whispered you lean over me and whispered yeah. to, Little Miss Sunshine did it better and the guy in front of him was like yeah like, yeah but they didn't have <laughs> Alan Arkin spreading dollar bills on a kid like they did in this I was like yeah if only his character lived that long to do that. <laughs> Spoiler! Oh, sad face. Yeah. Anyway, so next one we got was Carrie, the Stephen King remake. Which, you know what? It doesn't look too bad. Yeah! I it, mean, like, it has a talented cast. Or at least yeah. the two leads are talented. Yeah, the only thing that bugs me is the part where she says, you know, I can use my mind to move things, and she's impressed that the wind seems to move a flag. Was she really? I think I might have zoned out at that part. <laughs> no, it's just one thing is like, you do realize there's a thing called wind on the outside, right? <laughs> Maybe she can see the colors of the wind. But a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> We're having too much fun. Okay. But, I mean, it's like, it has a hit girl in there. She's a really talented actress. Yeah, uh, she's only done one not so great movie. Which one was that? Kick Ass 2. Uh, yeah. But even all, in all fairness, she was the best part of that movie. Yeah, I mean, I, I, even I, if her I, scenes were boring as hell. I, yeah, her whole plot line was completely pointless in that movie. But I like, I didn't hate Kick Ass too. I thought, I thought some of that was, was good. But it was, it was okay. Like I'll give it that much. But uh, it wasn't as bad as I expected, but it wasn't as good as I'd hoped. Yeah. But either way, I, I have faith in her, so I think she'll do good. And yeah. you had that one girl who was in, in the kids are all right, which Julianne we, uh, Moore. Julianne Moore, which movie I really liked, and I thought she was really, I think she's a pretty good actress, so I have good faith in her. Uh, my concern, oddly enough, comes with Stephen King. And I know Stephen King has a large fan base. Don't crucify me for this. But... Oh, they, they've kind of defected. Don't worry. Really? Um, it's one of those things like... They love his earlier stuff, but now it's... You know, it's kind of like that Family Guy gag. All right, for my 400th novel, a couple <laughs> goes to a cabin and gets attacked by... A lamb. A lamb monster! <laughs> Ooh, ha, ee, ee. You're not even trying anymore, are you? When can I have it? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So was that was Carrie one of his earlier works, or was that one of his later? I think stuff? so, yeah. Because keep in mind, this is a remake of the old seventies. Yeah, that's but... what I thought. Uh, so it's like it's about saying I don't know, I don't know what, Car what Stephen King's hard on for psychics was in his books, but I don't. It's like one in every goddamn even like an Under the Dome. There's a fucking psychic. I don't know what it is. I don't get it. Under the Dome. But we digress. Next movie. Uh, last one. Last one looks fun. Uh, Machete Kills. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> where it starts. Oh, this is actually yeah. a new trailer for this. I actually haven't seen this. Yeah, one. I saw this one with uh, really the last. No, the last movie I saw. You're next. Okay, yeah. Which I don't think we recorded one for that one. So that's not a big deal. Because I saw it by myself. Tear. <laughs> <laughs> Bound to happen eventually. Anyway. Oh. Anyway, 
Uh, but, so yeah, I mean, like this one starts out with like a the phone raining and felt being handed off like three different women and handed up to Charlie Sheen, <laughs> like this is the president. And of course, it's, it just looks fuck. It looks like a Robert Rodriguez action movie, which are thankfully, always fucking awesome. The only difference that, uh, well, at least unlike some of the other ones, this one doesn't take itself seriously at all. Like I love the first no. machete thing. I actually it. haven't seen. I've seen parts of it. I haven't seen the whole thing. It was a freaking hoot. I, I mean, just, I just know I've seen the part where he uses the long intestine to rappel down the building wall, <laughs> which is fucking brilliant. <laughs> But it's like Robert Rodriguez action movies are fucking amazing in their way, just their over the top nature. So I can't. You have a uh, Sophia, what's her name? Sophia Vergara. Sophia Vergara. She has a fucking bullet bra. <laughs> Bu- bullet bra. Copyright. Was yeah. it the double D's? The double D's. Yep. Yeah. I'm copyrighting that term, by the way. You, you say you owe me twenty bucks. Anyway. <laughs> but it's with the bullet bras. I don't even know. It reminded me of this one movie that my friends made me watch called Tank Girl, which I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I know of it. Saw a review of it. I'm going to pass. <laughs> yeah, for something very similar. Instead of a double D bra, a uh, double D bullet bra, it was actually like a drill bra, <laughs> which is just as stupid as it sounds. And granted, oddly enough, all I could think of was that scene flashing in my head <laughs> when the, like, the, the double D popped out. It's like, and I love Sophia for, uh, yeah, because she's hilarious. I mean, acting-wise, not so much, but she's a hilarious woman. <laughs> but... So, it's, and of course you have, uh, the psycho playing the uh, villain. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it just for that, because I don't think he's acting. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's just being himself. All we need are the Jew jokes and we're golden. <laughs> I think someone told him this is a sequel to The Beaver. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Chete. And now, Chetty, you're gonna get it. Don't worry, we're gonna take you down! <laughs> we're gonna give you your commands when we launch this missile. And the, oh, they had that one quote in there, too, that I usually don't like pop culture references, but this one made me laugh. Was like he's holding the iPhone, and yeah. because you can use that to like uh, text, to call, and tweet. No, call, and text, tweet. But Chetty, don't, don't tweet. tweet. And it pulled the knife out of the <laughs> iPhone. But yeah, it looks like good. Like purposely stupid fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, I think I think I'll be like in movies. I will yeah. just I'll sit there and I'll be laughing my ass off of the whole thing because it's yeah. one of those movies. Again, it's like Ghost Rider two. I was like, hello. His girlfriend is currently making fun of him. <laughs> 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 or making fun of me. I can't really tell. <laughs> bit of color me. A bit of color me. Anyway, I think that's all. Anyway. <laughs> I think we're done. Yeah. <laughs> this is went from a review to just a general screw around video. Pretty much. And I'm okay with that. You know what? It's good for turn form, I think. After Percy Jackson, I think we're good to go. For me, anyway. We just posted Rina a couple, a couple days ago. But this is the first one I've done in a couple weeks. So I'm actually in a pretty good mood. So I'm going to cancel all that before I get angry again. And we'll see you all... Later this week with Insidious Chapter 2, which from my heard is actually really cheesy too, so that should be yeah. fun. And we're actually going to have someone new for that one, so we're going to see how that goes. That's right, Michael. You're going to go back <laughs> to the reviews. <laughs> going back to camera. <laughs> mm. Great Scott, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Have a good one.